Hey guys, what's up? Today we are playing Saving Zoe. We are saving Zoe, our sister, from a haunted house that is occupied by crazy evil people. Okay, let's go. Oh, spider sounds. Ooh. Sounds just lovely. Zoe calls me the worst sister in the world, but I personally don't think that's true. I'm not saying that because I'm biased or anything. Would the worst sister in the world give her sister all her stuff and things? A lot of closet stuff and blah, blah, blah. The worst sister in her world rather see her sister trip than help tie her laces for her. She never point out that her sister has greens in her teeth or when she has food in her face. True, bad sisters would not, would not do any of those things, I guess. It's not babying, it's helping. And yet all I get in response is wine after wine. And the worst sister in the world most certainly would not take her sister to a haunted house in the middle of a late night Real Housewives marathon. She would have stayed right where she was on the couch. But nope, since she wants some appreciation for once in her life, this so-called worst sister in the world got up in the middle of the episode, mind you, and drove her sister to this haunted house. So that is how I got stuck here, in a haunted house with my baby sister, trying to prove to her that I am a damn good sister. Barely one step inside, and she's already scared. Kids are dumb. Why do they go to things that they know they're going to be scared of? This still doesn't mean you're not the worst sister. You're lucky I don't leave you here. I drove you, remember? That's because mom made you do it. Oh no, that's not why. I'm giving, I'm caring. I'm making a Friday night sacrifice. Yeah, yeah. Because mom was going to take away your phone. Whatever. You're always getting hung up on the details that make me look bad. Are there any details that don't make you look bad? Okay, Kelly, stay cool. Don't let her get to you. Shrugging, I jam my hands to my pockets and keep on walking. The hallway of the dilapidated house might look spooky on its own, but without a tour guide around to activate the scares, it's kind of just lame. Poor Zoe seems frightened either way, though. She may try and act tough around me, but I can tell she's faking it. What do they call that? Putting on airs or something? Yep. Yep. It's like she's putting on tough girl airs. Shah. She's shaking like a leaf, trying to strife down an empty hallway like she's in an action movie. <laughs> That'd be something to see. Reading room. Hey, I think this door is where we're got to go through. Ready, squirt? Don't come at that. If she looks like a squirt and acts like a squirt, then she's a squirt. And if she looks like the worst and acts like the worst, then she's the worst. Shut up. I pull the door open and in one swift motion and shove her inside. She stumbles into the darkness. I go in after her because I'm not mean enough to leave her completely alone. Up ahead, I can see small circles of light dancing, tiny flashlights. That must be the group that we have to meet up with. I start walking towards them before I notice that Zoe isn't moving. She's frozen. I find her hand. It's hard to see in the room. Somebody whispering something in the corner. Maybe a poem or a prayer or something. A figure sways near what I'm guessing is our walking path. Come on. We need to move if we're going to catch up to them. There's nothing to be afraid of, okay? I've got you. Her fingers tense up around mine. Okay. 
everything is great for a bit. Going exactly the way it's supposed to. I'm heading towards the flashlights. She's heading towards the flashlights. I'm holding her hand. She's holding mine. It's like a fantastic sister dream. But then something goes bump in the night. And she lets go of me and runs off screaming somewhere. I try chasing her, but... You know, kids. Their ability to run off, out of reach. It didn't help that the universe worked against me and I tripped over something during my pursuit to catch her. Once I recover, I don't see the flashlights anymore. Zoe, get back here. I run towards where I thought they were, my shoes hitting the wood floor so hard I feel like I'm almost flying. Why'd she have to run off like that? Why couldn't she have given me some warning before bolting? Zoe! I don't see the bookshelf until I've already collided with it. The impact knocks me off my feet and into my, onto my back. Bonk. Ugh. Ugh. Oh, you're creepy. So creepy looking. Oh my god! And he, he blinks! He blinks! I wasn't expecting that. Okay. Anyway. Sorry. The next thing I know, I'm staring at a lit up ceiling still on the floor from my previous collision. The only person in the room with me is a confused looking guy who seems like he's around my age. Give or take a year. He has a walkie talkie with him. I crawl back up onto my feet. You, do you work here? Yes. Are you all right, miss? I found you passed out. How long have I been out? Oh, I'm not sure. I was making my end of the night rounds and found you here. Were you here with anyone? Yeah, my little sister. I groaned, clutching the back of my head. I took a harder fall than I thought. Description. Shoes. Kind of like me, but smaller. Pink hair. Um, she might be wearing Mary Jane's. He turns away to speak into his walkie-talkie. We've got a cold, a code chorizo, wearing Mary Jane's color. Black, and she was wearing a pink jacket dress thing. Black Mary Jane's may or may not be in a pink jacket dress. Do you copy? There's a click and a fuzzy response that I can't make out. He pointlessly nods a bunch of times. It's not like the person on the other end can see him. So that's weird. People do a lot of weird things when they're nervous, I guess. Why is he nervous? Are you doing something? You doing something? Huh? Huh? Okay. Exit staff, have you seen a code chorizo matching description? Another response, this one even fuzzier. He holds the receiver directly to his ear, then looks over at me. Ma'am, were you going to, we're gonna lock up the facility. There hasn't been any sighting of her at the exit. They're going to review the security tapes and walk around the perimeter in case someone overlooked her. How did you get here? I walked through the door. I've got a Camry green with a pink paintball stain on the side. Oh yeah. He radios in the information about my car, raising his eyebrows as he mentions the pink stain. Long story. I like paintball. Deal with it. Okay, well, have someone check the car in case your sister's there. My name is Blake, by the way. We have a great staff here, so I'm sure we'll be able to find Chorizo. I mean, your sister, very soon. I'm Kelly. What's up with the code name and stuff? Well, we can't just say lost child on the radio in case we're overheard by, you know, someone that grabbed her. We mention her shoes because a kidnapper can easily put another coat on a child. What they can't do so easily is change their shoes. That's pretty true. Yeah. Nah, I mean, yeah, because you wouldn't be carrying around the exact matching pair of shoes. Not saying that she's been kidnapped or anything. Just a safety precaution. Thanks. You make me feel so much better. Not. That's right. He's a... Suspicious. Super suspicious. 
I'm going to keep looking for her. There's no use in hanging around in this room. I can't let you search on your own. Company policies concerning safety hazards and all that. I'll go with you. It's also safest that way. I wouldn't want you to accidentally trigger something you shouldn't. Like a scary thing? Are, are, is it going to kill me or something? If I walk to... what? It's a haunted house. Nothing should be able to kill me. What? Like a death trap? We are on the same wavelength, Kelly. Exactly. It's like, what? You guys are suspicious. Haunted houses are death traps for people with weak hearts, you know. <laughs> yeah. And I'm also like, you know, 17. Probably don't have a weak heart. So, you know. And for little girls who are afraid of books falling on the ground. I would have laughed if I wasn't so worried about Zoe. Blake picks up a book off the floor and I'm getting... That's the one that scared Zoe. Uh, and I'm betting that's the one that scared Zoe off. To my surprise, it actually has pages. You guys weren't just dropping boxes filled with rocks? What? The book. The heavy smack sound. I thought it was just a silly prop. Oh no. Oh no. We put a lot of effort into our haunted houses. Our events might be pop-up and rather linear since they're tour-guided, but we make sure to put on a ton of work into it. People might only get to see 10% of that effort, but that's all right. We want it to be a full 10% that feels like 100%. Like, wow, they thought of everything, even book pages. Um, something like that. My boss sells it much better than I do. See? Look, you can read the book if you want. It's real. Some of it is authentic text. He's beaming with pride. Wow, he must really like working here. Well, let's read the book, because why, I would probably read it. Why not? I take the book from him and bring the pages close to my eyes. We slice the souls from their skin. We pull their eyes from the hollow heads. What? Whoa, this is some pretty gruesome stuff. Those who adorn special marks upon their flesh are wearing wards. These protections will guard them against a cruel fate. The mark is a set of three symbols. I flip through some more, the contents of the pages becoming increasingly creepy as, my, as I skim the line, lines, the lines of the text, not the lemmings, not the lemmings of the text. And the least innocent ones. It will be their shells that we scrape off using a technique borrowed from fishmongers. Gut the innards and spare the fillet. Okay, those. Th th what? What? A fillet is just a way of cutting things. I don't know. Okay, I don't know. Whatever. When you get them like that, you can arrange the peels of their skin however you like you'll find that the stomach gives away the best. Ugh, it's disgusting. Evisceration is a necessity. If the sacrifice isn't cooperating, you should skip to evisceration with a firm slice to the abdomen. See figure 5.1. Very scientific, you know, configuration for sacrificing people. Yeah. Um, who came up with this? One of our staff member does some writing on the side, but he borrowed a lot from legit sources. Most of it is the real deal. It's meant to give some insight into the cult we base this haunted house off of. I close the book and give it back to him. So this place is supposed to be a ghostish, cultish house? Say that 10 times fast. I wonder why they didn't just pick one or the other. There's something wrong with being simple. There's nothing wrong. Nothing wrong with being simple. I take it you didn't read our brochure. It's meant to be a simulation tour of a cult house with some supernatural elements. Yeah, I think my sister mentioned something about that. She practically memorized that brochure of yours. She's like a spokeswoman for you guys. She knows everything. Ah, uh -huh. what was her name again? Zoe. Well, once we find Zoe, 
I'll talk to my boss about getting her involved with our online street team. They help us with our social media marketing. It's very important since we do pop-up haunted attractions. If we don't have a strong marketing team, then no one will know we exist. This room we're in right now is the reading room, in case you were wondering. I wasn't wondering. We knew that. You're just blabbering on. We load it with cultists who read books like this one out loud by candlelight. Okay. We keep it pitch black to make it scary. Okay. Guests are usually given flashlights, but I suppose you didn't have one. If you did, you're not holding on to it now. Dojo you're creeping me out. We came in last night and missed out on the flashlights. I rub the back of my head. I can feel the knot forming. Hmm. Did you trip and bump your head in the dark? Is that what knocked you out? You might want to get that checked out. It could be a concussion. Could be, but I'll be fine for right now. I'll get it checked out later. Right now, I'm interested in finding Zoe. My head will hold up. Are you sure? Most of our staff members are CPR certified. I can send you to someone. Nope. What does being CPR certified have to do with a concussion? Exactly nothing. I have been certified like 15 times. <laughs> has nothing to do with concussion. I'm deadly sure. What's the next room? Where do you think she could have gone from here? Possibly the living quarters. It's where the cultists would go to sleep. Follow me. It's close to the reading room. There aren't a ton of room. There aren't a ton of rooms in this haunted house, right? Eh, we're not the only ones canvassing the facility, so we won't have to cover every single room ourselves. If that's what you're worried about, we'll be fine. It won't take very long for the staff team to find her and eat her. I think we're the only ones in this part of the haunted house, though. A streak of green zooms across my vision. What was that? Are you sure no one else is around here? They would have radioed me if I haven't gotten anything since I reported to your sister. But I just saw someone in, like, cultist gear. Green, long flowing cloak with a hood pulled over their head? That's strange. We don't have outfits like that. Our actors wear blue, not green. Let's go on to the living quarters. That bump on your head is probably making you see things. I don't think so. I know what I saw. Someone definitely ran by. They went over there. We can catch him if we run. I thought you were only interested in finding Zoe. What does chasing after something that might not even be real have to do with anything? It's your imagination playing tricks on you. Nope. We're gonna we're looking for a sister and there might be a weirdo that has our sister. I take off running. I don't need Blake's permission to do anything. I hear him right behind me. Creepy, creepy man right behind me. I skid to a stop. Blake nearly crashes into my back. What are you doing? In front of us, the hooded person is sprawled out on the floor. What happened here? Did he trip? Cardiac arrest? Just let's throw out cardiac arrest like it happens all the time right in front of you. I think he's hurt. Watch out. Let me handle this. He cups his hand around his mouth and calls out. Oh, okay. Hello, sir. Is everything okay? Um. <laughs> you seriously think calling out to him is going to do anything? He clearly, he's clearly out cold, dude. I didn't know that from where I'm standing. Okay. It sounds like there's this creaking in the distance, but I don't pay it much mind. One of us needs to check up on this guy, whoever he is. Maybe he's lost. It's Halloween, so that would explain the weird outfit. I can pull down his hood and see if he's okay. Uh, we'll, let, we'll let him do it. Yeah. Blake approaches the man. He's slow about it, hesitant. I hold my breath. He grabs the back of the hood and pulls. 
What? He's not a man at all. He's a wooden dummy. A stupid prop. A knock on my smooth wooden... A knock on its smooth wooden face. Someone must have dragged... Sorry. Someone must have had this rigged up and de deployed it by accident. But that still doesn't explain the outfit. Ha! Maybe someone wanted to get away unseen. Ditching their cloak might take the make them less recognizable to people. It's possible someone wore it and then took it off to blend in with the crowd more easily. I guess. Because that would make it harder to identify them as the person in the green cloak who found a little girl and took her away. Okay. My stomach sinks. But he would still have to have the little girl. So... Anyway, let's go. It doesn't take us long to reach the living quarters. The creepy, creepy living quarters. I nearly slip on a scrap of paper. I take a glance at it before putting it in my pocket. Okay. Can, can we look at... Ah, ah, eh, 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 eh. Eh, eh, eh. Okay. Never mind. Okay. Okay, well, I guess I can't look at it, so that's that. Is Zoe into haunted houses, or did this one in particular call out to her? I've never seen her so excited to go, go to one before. Congrats. Looks like your brochure did its job. Truth is, she's a total scaredy cat. Only acting like she's brave when she's really not. Maybe it's because you're brave. You did chase down a wooden dummy after all. Eh, big deal. Hey, not many people would have chased down to a random person they saw run by, especially in a haunted house. What if the dummy had been real? I don't know what to say to that. Abrasive is a better word for me than brave, I get on people's nerves because I don't respect boundaries. Don't respect people's bubbles. Or so they tell me, anyway. She probably has little... What the heck was that? Okay. She probably has little sister syndrome where she wants to act like and do the same things as her sister. Yeah, right. Little sister syndrome. What would you know about that? I'm familiar with a similar disease known as little brother syndrome. You have a little brother. Is he working in the haunted house? No, he's not. We don't have children on staff. He would have loved hiding in here though. Hide and seek's his favorite. Zoe liked that game when she was younger. She always hid either in the closet or under the bed. Never anywhere else. I'd find her within five minutes. Could she be playing hide-and-seek with everyone now? No. I'll kill her if she is. Ha! Yes, I would kill. Kill, kill, kill. I'm going to go check for a status update. One moment, please. He turns on his walkie-talkie. Static roars out of it. The reception in his room is terrible. Do you want to borrow my phone? No. This place is a dead zone. Cell phones don't work here. I check my phone for confirmation of that. And sure enough, he wasn't lying. He goes to the door. The knob doesn't turn. Frustrated, he starts banging on it with his fist. It seems like the door is stuck. Are you serious? It's not a problem. Don't worry about it. He clicks on his radio again. White noise fills the room. I cover my ears until he makes it stop. Stay calm. There's nothing to be afraid of. There's lots to be afraid of. This is a haunted house. Ha ha ha. Blake laughs at my stupid joke. And it was stupid. And then suddenly stops, his face darkening and growing more serious. Kelly, hide in the closet. Huh? Don't ask questions, just do it. Uh, okay. I jump into the closet. Blake closes the doors for me. I hear him drop to the floor and drag himself. I'm guessing he's hiding under the bed. 
Why are we doing this? Is something coming for us? We slice the souls from their skin. We pull their eyes from hollowed heads. Is that what's going to happen to us? Something wants to get inside. Ah. Uh, oh. I wasn't prepared for this. I didn't save. No. Okay. Okay. No. No. Save. Save. Save it. Okay. I, I wasn't prepared for such actions. I managed to hold it together. I wait a moment before I leave the closet. Blake's the only one in the room. It looks like we're safe. Is there blood on that closet? Blake's expression pretty much mirrors what I'm feeling. What was that? Why did we have to hide so fast? He knows something that I don't know. You better tell me right now or I'm gonna punch you in the face. I, I have a small confession to make. Look, the only reason I didn't tell you this was because I didn't believe it myself. Out with it. This isn't a haunted house. It's, uh, well, it is a haunted house. Just not a fake one. It's a house that's haunted with spirits seeking revenge. The staff team chose this location because the rumors that there was a cult who performed sacrifices here. Apparently the victims are trying to fight back now. Nope. Nope. Victims wouldn't hurt innocent people. I doubt it. Death gave them the power that the cult stripped from them. The cult probably thought they were freeing their souls, but in reality, they just trapped them here. I guess that's the easiest way to explain it. Blake, I'm going to ask you a serious question, and I want you to give me a serious answer. Are you absolutely sure that no one is pulling a prank on us? He looks away and checks his radio again. I'm sure. Things keep happening around us that don't make any sense. That thing from earlier? The mannequin? Yes. And my walkie-talkie not working. It's all so strange. Hey, I, I feel like I have to ask you this. Do you trust me? Nope. What kind of question is that? Please answer me. Nope. <laughs> Sorry. Nope. Speaking of strange, there's something strange about the way he ask, he's asking me that question. No, I don't trust you. I <laughs> don't know who you are. I don't know you enough to trust you. There, I gave him a middle-of-the-road type of answer. Not too nice, not too mean. He flinches like I hit him. Ugh, okay. Thanks for being honest, anyway. When we came in, I noticed that you put something in your pocket. What was it? Can I see it? Sure. I hand it over to him. As I do so, I catch a glimpse of the drawing. What do you think this is from? That book? I remember reading something about symbols in there. I think so. Blake looks paler. I've seen this symbol before. A bunch of the staff members have it on their arm, along with two more. Um, I really don't trust you now, but you know, it's cool. I thought the whole warding of spirits thing is a joke, but now we should go back to the reading room. Do you remember where you put that book? Or, yeah, yes. Okay, I'm getting their voices mixed up, sorry. He tries the door. Thankfully, it opens this time. Why were we so sure it was going to open in the first place this time? He hurried in the reading room. Suspicion. Suspicion. Yes. Thank you. Blake starts throwing books around. I have to duck to avoid getting hit. What are you doing? I can't find it. I can't find the book. I glance over at one of the few books he hasn't tossed across the room. Um, did you try this one? It looks identical to the one that I was reading. Yes, that's it. Thank you. 
I grab it before he can and start thumbing through the pages, only to find that most of them have been torn out. It's more ruined now than the first time I read it. They're not going to be go easy on us. He takes a couple pages in between his thumb and forefinger and flips them over. This. Read this page. There are three symbols to be found. They are as following. Someone ripped out the rest of the pages. Maybe they hid them somewhere. Wouldn't they have been better off just tossing them into a fire? Hiding it means that someone's going to find it eventually. Wouldn't it? Wouldn't burning it? They might not have that kind of power. They, as in ghosts. Uh, I don't think it's ghosts, but cool. Come to think of it, and this might be unsettling, but many of the cult's victims were children. We could be playing some form of hide-and-seek. Oh, that's good. Oh, so not only were they religious freaks, but they were also killing children. How could they get any worse? Well, I think they were cannibals, too. So, there was that. There was that. I check the next page. I read over the instructions for the arm marks. We need to draw the one symbols. Draw the symbols and then go... Then do a prayer to seal it in. Okay. Then go shumba naba naba da. I bet the cultists had to ward themselves against lots of spirits. That's the only reason why something like this would be in this book. Don't go putting things on your body. You don't know what they are. No. Didn't you say one of your staff's writers put these things together? It's accurate. This isn't one of the mid-made-up parts. How do you... Okay. I super don't trust you now, because how would you know that? Like, I'm going to be very vague about everything except this book. This book is very real. Very real. To be honest with you, the majority of the books here were pieced together from multiple sources. There wasn't a lot of creativity involved. This book is, a, is as real as it gets. We should do the prayer now to protect ourselves. We have to head into the indulgence room next. The indulgence room is meant to be a hell room. It's our most over-the-top space. There are hacked up bodies hanging. If there's any room we need to prepare for, it's that one. Even a third of the ward is better than nothing. I don't think that's a good idea. I just think we're walking in a trap, so I'm not going to do it. Um, I don't feel comfortable doing this, writing weird things on my arm and saying a weird prayer out of a creepy cultist book. I have no idea if this ward stuff is real. The strange mannequin. What do you think of that? Could have been an accident. I don't know. I'd rather hold off on doing anything like this until I know more. I think your doubts will harm you more than it will help you. Don't talk to me about my doubts. Punch you in the face. Fine. Let's just get to the indulgence room. What? You're not going to draw on yourself? Right? Right. So if you're so concerned about it, why don't you do it yourself? I'm on your side. If you're not doing it, then I won't either. Aha. Uh -huh. We exit to the hallway. Blake shivers. Why is it so cold out here? We keep the heat on. I don't know. He should deal with it instead of complaining. I'm cold too, and I'm not whining about it to everyone. He reminds me of Zoe, always whining instead of taking action. He is a bit of a whiner. I'm sorry we have to deal with all of this. It's not like it's your fault. You've got nothing to be sorry for. Well, see Zo we'll see Zoe soon. Er, well, find her soon. Yeah, you're weird. The thought of possible, of possible vengeful ghosts roaming about only makes me want to find Zoe faster, to be completely honest. Oh, lovely. The haunted house designers went all out in this room. Are those eyeballs in that jar? 
Yes, the cult often scooped out eyes. I don't remember why exactly. Ah, oh, lovely. It's impressive, isn't it? Nope. <laughs> I'm not sure what the worst thing in the room is. Maybe the hanging dissection? I shudder. There's no way that Zoe would be in here. She'd run out of here in the first sight of this place. I'm half ready to run out too, actually. Maybe there will be a trace of her somewhere around here. Probably not. I start looking around the room, mindful of my steps. Blake moves around the room as well, but his eyes are fixed on his walkie-talkie. What he's doing looks less like searching and more like pacing. Hey, Kelly. It looks like there's some paper in that bucket over there. So go pick it up. Go pick it up. Hmm? Huh? Why are you calling me over for it? What? Why should I care? Paper in a bucket has nothing to do with finding Zoe. It could be another one of those symbols. Is he serious? Well, I already told you I'd rather not write some weird symbols on myself or say any kind of prayer. What I want to do is find my sister. First, Blake's face goes blank. So creepy. Then his eyebrows knit together. The rest of his features still stoic or static, whatever. You should look in the bucket. Uh, no. At this point, I might. it might be a good idea to just do what he says since he's acting very weird. Oh, lovely. I stepped up to the bucket, lean over it, and peer in. Is that corn? <laughs> the stench is unbelievable. If it's freshly dissected, it actually wouldn't smell that bad. It'd smell mainly like iron. It smells and looks like meat that has been rotting for days, if not weeks. It's gray and fleshy and slimy, and I can't look at it anymore, retching a step away from the bucket. There is no way I'm fishing around in there. No, thank you. If you want to see what's in it so badly, you go ahead and look. Blake stares at me again, and his face is even more unsettling than before. I don't understand why you're being so rude. I'm really not being rude, actually. Actually, I'm not. I asked you to do one simple thing, and you... Blake? All we're doing here is wasting time. Obviously, Zoe isn't in here. Like I said earlier, she wouldn't stay in this room for one minute. I may be the worst sister in the world, but I know Zoe well enough to know that for sure. We need to check the next room. No, we need to stay in here. We need to punch you in the face. You can stay in here if you want. I'm going to search the next room. I don't need to wait around for him. No, I don't. I can't let you do that. They need more time. Oh yeah, punch him in the face. In that moment, all the blood rushes out of my face. Who needs more time? What do you mean? Who are they? Time for what? Where? Is Zoe. Don't worry, Kelly. Little Zoe is being taken care of. Uh, there's a candlestick behind you, Kelly. Just jab him in the eyes with the lit candles. Soon she will free of her vehicle, untainted from this world. We know what's best for her. No, you don't. You don't. I want to lunge at him, grab him by the throat, force him to tell me what he knows. But I'm a coward. What? No, you're not. Afraid of what he might do to me. Afraid of what he might do if I piss him off even more. You have never showed any sign of being a coward. What the stinking heck? Take me to my sister now. That's not possible. A ritual is in progress. Can't be interrupted. I can only guess what they're doing to Zoe. I can't help but remember the look on her face when she was scared earlier and compare it to what it must look like now. I brought you here. I have to get her out. In desperation, I sprint away from the door we came in through towards the exit. If I can make it past Blake. Just a few more strides. Zoe is so close. Not on my watch. Blake seizes me by the collar and shoves me away from the door. Oh, we're going to save real quick. <sighs> I 
say we punch him in the face. That's my answer to everything. Guarding it with my body, he pulls it. Guarding it with his body, he pulls a dagger from his pocket and daftly unsheathes it. The glint on the ornately carved handle matches the one in his eye. Okay. With his other hand, he presses a button in his walkie talkie. We have a runner. This time, something other than static comes out of the speaker. Keep her in check. We still need time. I have to get out of here. I dart past him, donkey low, and out of his reach. Oh, seriously, those two options. Squish, 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 squish. Anyway. Um. Go there. I run into the living quarters faster than I've ever run in my life. Footsteps echo in the hallway, not soon after mine. He's coming. I slam the door behind. Don't slam it! Slam the door behind me and instantly regret it. I've just told Blake exactly where I am. Yeah! I have no choice but to hide and no time to think. The doorknob rattles. Hide under the bed! I roll under the bed. Pressing it to keep calm. Keep calm. Success. I managed to hold myself together long enough. I don't move for my spot. The sound of the door swinging open is followed by slow, deliberate footsteps. The steps make their way around the room and then out of it again. This is my chance to leave. Quickly, I make my way back to the indulgence room, towards where Zoe might be. So creepy. I keep my eyes trained on the floor. I can't look at the hanging bodies again, because this time, I know they might be real. You can arrange the peels of skin however you like. That's what the book said. Suddenly, laughter erupted from the next room, the one Blake had tried to keep me away from. Could Zoe be in there? Could it be dangerous beyond the door? I scan the room from, for something to defend myself with. In a place full of butchered bodies, there has to be something I can work with. Sure enough, there is what looks like a kitchen knife in the corner. It's blade covered in blood. It was probably used to chop up some poor soul and then got tossed away, forgotten. Gut the innards and spare the fillet. Makes no sense, but okay. I grab the knife by its plastic handle and realize I have no idea what I'm doing. I've only ever used knives for cutting food. It's easy. You just poke. Poke, 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 poke. I practice a stab, aiming the knife at the flank of the headless torso dangling from the ceiling. The blade makes contact with the flesh, but instead of cutting through it, it retracts into the handle. Oh my god, we got a stinking fake knife. My heart drops. It's a trick knife. A prop. Useless. Despite wanting to throw the knife to the ground, I hold on to it. If it was convincing enough to fool me, then it might fool someone else. Or we can grab the candlestick and bludgeon them to death. That's also good. Who knows? Blake's knife could be fake as well. It's probably not. Hopefully. That is... How big is this house? As I walk into the next room, something slithers past me, tickling my ankle. <laughs> oh, no. No. Taken by surprise, I jump to avoid it and trip falling forwards. <laughs> He's so not nimble. I catch myself, pain jolting through my wrists. In front of me, the door creaks open. I stay quiet, attempting to keep the volume of my breathing under control. Maybe no one will see me from here. Or I could face the enemy head on. I do have this knife, after all. Let's crawl. I stay low to the ground, crawling on my hands and knees. I freeze at every noise. Plip, plop, plip, plop. Something drips on me from overhead. I don't dare look up. Whatever it is, it's thick and heavy, and I know it isn't water. I can hear Zoe's voice echoing in my head. She's calling for help. She needs me. What if they're hurting her right now? Sticking their knives into her stomach and dragging down. No, I had to stop thinking like that. Stay focused. Damn it! I need to crawl faster. I hear footsteps and I pause. There's a cubby hole nearby. I crawl into it. Okay. 
Kelly, where are you? It's better that I find you than anyone else. They won't hesitate to strike you down. I know you're hiding somewhere. You can come out. Stay hidden. My body is screaming inside of the cubby hole. I can hardly breathe without my chest hurting. Boop. Da -ba 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 -da -ba -ba -ba. Da -ba -da. Okay. Saved. Just in case. I don't know what happens if you die. I don't want to find out. My body is screaming inside of the cubby hole. I can hardly breathe without my chest hurting. Hmm, so you're not in here then. He laughs to himself. Already attending the ritual. All right. I watch Blake pass by carefully not to let him be seen. Myself be seen. He heads into the next room. That's where Zoe must be. Zoe, just hold on a little longer. I'll be there soon. I crawl out of my hiding place, clutching the trick knife to my hand, in my hand, like a, it's something to be feared. I keep my steps light, yet hurried, as I head into the room. There are cloaked figure, figures, cultists, huddling around a little body laid out on the altar. I scream for their attention, telling them to stay away from her. My hands are shaking. I can't stop shaking. Zoe! Zoe, excuse me! Kelly! They turn to look at me slowly, one at a time. Oh, you're here. Your resolve is admirable. Hey, put you in the face. He steps out from the crowd. Unfortunately, we can't let her go. We're in the middle of saving her. You're killing her. Zoe, are you hurt? Have they done anything to you? Help! Her voice is hoarse. How long has she been screaming, begging for someone to come rescue her? I should have been here sooner. The crowd starts humming and chanting. They're swaying from side to side. I point my knife at them and trying to scare them, but it's no effect. You aren't saving her if you kill her. She'd be dead. That's backwards. Just let her go, please. How am I supposed to get through all these people? They could kill her as soon as I take a step. We'll slice the soul from her skin. And we'll put her eyes from her hollowed head. The passage from the book. Her soul will be freed before this world has a chance to taint her. There's something special about Zoe's soul. She's one of the few worth saving. Zoe struggles to get out of the altar. The cultists hold her down, ignoring her cries for help. Let her go or else, or else I'll kill you. It's the first thing I could come up with. Your odds aren't looking good. You should make your next choice carefully. By freeing her soul, we're doing your sister a fine service. Her innocence will be maintained. Okay, think, think. How can I get us both out of this mess? Volunteer to take Zoe's place, explain that Zoe's already corrupted, offer to join the cult with Zoe. Wow. I don't know. You need to volunteer to take her place. They just probably kill her after you. Uh, we'll try it. She's not as innocent as you think. She's a kid, but that doesn't mean she hasn't seen things or done things that your cult wouldn't like. It's the purity of her soul, not the actions of her vehicle. That's what we're trying to preserve. We don't sense any corruption from her. That's a rare gift that should be cherished. Please let me go. She fights to wiggle free from the cultist grip. One of them brandishes a knife, holding it to her face. Zoe whimpers. Every muscle in her body tenses. I wish I could do something to help her. All I have are my words and my resolve. I have to stay strong for her. You're cherishing that rare gift of hers by killing her? That doesn't make any sense. Nothing about this is right and you know it. That's why you have to hide behind a series of lies. Her vehicle may be discarded, but we are freeing her. We're going, doing the right thing for her. Zoe. For Zoe. They can't be... Why can't you understand that? You're twisted? That's probably why. Are you truly prepared to die? You can't turn around and walk out of here. No one will harm you. Oh, I can. I can turn around and walk out. 
Your your vehicle can remain intact. Don't leave me here. Kelly, please. Please. The cultist closes. Closest to her pushes the blade closer to her throat. Zoe, it's going to be okay. Her eyes start stare straight into me. Will it be? Really? I wish I knew. What will you do? Will you go home or die right here where you stand? I can't just leave my sister. Yes, you can. It's your choice. Think about it. Ah, uh, no. I won't abandon Zoe. I'd rather die fighting. Her last memory of me won't be of me walking out of the door. I lunge towards Blake, my arms coming down in an arc. I never get to complete my swing. His dagger's in my stomach. I drop to my knees. Ugh. As my blood spreads all over the floor, I faintly hear Zoe screaming. Sorry, Zoe. Looks like I messed up. But what do you think of me now? Am I still the worst sister in the world? Am I? Eh. I died. Uh, I really liked it. I really liked the story. It was well written. Everything. I will probably go back and check out the other endings by myself, but I definitely think that you should play it and check them out for yourself. Okay, guys, don't forget to tickle that like button because you know it wants it. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.